Uh, let's move on and see how the internet did react to the game yesterday. Um, Art But Make It Sport says the assassination of St. Peter by Dominicio. Oh, another another classic. Oh, God. Um, so another art reimagined into the Spurs yesterday. Van der Ven has been uh, done in this one, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, poor guy, but so creative these guys how they find these bloody pictures but anyway you are enthusiastic you um kieran says enough is enough torp hayes out 100 percent. i, I could not get agree. this kit in the bin oh seriously. my god i'm telling i said why it. did we even use it yesterday i said it at the beginning of the season this kit blends in with the crowd and every time we bloody use it we get battered and we play awful i'm How telling you have we used it this season um fulham in the cup yeah embarrassing good performance luton away just about got over the line against Luton. Um, and that was a Luton side that were getting battered week in, week out. Yeah, at the point. time. Um, uh, City away. We got a draw, to be fair. Brighton away. One of our worst performances of the season. And yesterday. I don't think we played it since Brighton. Mm. THSC Matthew says, uh, one bad day at the office and you get the kind of hate Mickey van der Ven has been one of the most consistent and best players this season. And that won't change because of one game we will come back stronger. And I agree with that. Mickey van der Ven has been absolutely sensational this season and one bad game doesn't should not change anyone's opinion on him. I completely agree. But what all I would say is like people are acting like he's the one playing the bad back passes, if you know what I mean. He's not. It wasn't all down to him that those goals happened. But of, of course, he had a bad game, no getting away from it. Well, he's had much better games this season and he'll just have to chalk it down to one of those days for him. Chris Miller, Wendy Coy says um, it's year one. We lost our greatest ever player in the summer and he's currently got us uh, two, three places above where everyone predicted despite a period where we had no centre-backs and then lost three critical players for a month. No international duty, uh, sorry, two international duty. Di diabolical today, but no need to lose your minds. And I kind of do agree with that uh, to a certain extent. I mean, it's hard not to lose your mind when it's just like, exactly the same to what we saw last season the, uh, pretty much a year to the day uh, when we got embarrassed at St James's Park last time um, but I do agree with a lot of the statements that he has said I mean nobody thought we'd be in a top four race this mm. season losing Harry Kane more or less a completely new 11 try blend them in a new way of playing football as well getting back on the front foot so I think Ange has done a lot of good things this season so it shouldn't be just thrown out the window because of um a few bad moments and some worrying signs. No, I completely agree. The only the only caveat I would say to that is when we've had our fully fit team now for the last few weeks, especially in these games away from home against Fulham and Newcastle, the fact that we've looked as bad as we have has to be a concern. I don't think you can get away from that. But I think his overall point is 100% true. I think the, the overall picture is looking good at the moment. Um, I think, obviously, we're progressing well. We're in a good position in the table. So I think... Those, those things are all true. There's no need to lose our heads. But I, I I don't think we can just gloss over the fact that we've got a full team at the moment and we got battered by a really depleted Newcastle team. I don't think you can just overlook that. Maddis THFC says, Emerson is starting for us in the North London derby again. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> he's ready. Come on, Emerson. I, I hope he doesn't start, but if he does, he's going to be all for it. Is there anything creative we can do on right back? Maybe put Saar there or something? But... Kulisevsky. Kulisevsky there. But I do think it is going to be Emerson. Um, Dan Yidvid says, that's two wins from last I suppose his last 10 away games. Not good enough. And yeah, we highlighted this in the review and the takeaways, and it's completely spot on. Yeah, but what, as I say um, as well, um, away form, that's the hardest thing to get right because that's very, very tricky. Um, home home advantage is difficult to deal with, and especially you're going to hard grounds like uh, St. James's Park and Newcastle have a great home record. It's not going to be easy going there. Um, you're not going to turn that up there and play your best football all the time. But having you know, having said that, two wins away from home in the last 10, that, that can't be something that carries on for too much longer. Yeah. SM says two weeks of no Tottenham. <laughs> look at this. Yeah. And we are all <laughs> for it. No, I'm joking. Um, yeah, look, uh, it's not been the best recently, especially after yesterday. We could all do a break. The problem is, we had a two week break. I think Barnaby made this point. Are we the worst team when we've got a two week break coming up, honestly? Um, after the Fulham game, he was asked, oh, you know, um, do, uh, do you, are you looking forward to that break or something? He said, oh, yeah, we're going to need it. Um, after how we played and then the same thing happens 
yesterday. Uh, yeah, later. yeah, exactly. So that's got to be a concern. Yeah, it is a concern. What was our game after Fulham? What was the game? Was I that think, Palace? Uh, we was it? We beat Palace three one. Was it? Um, it was Palace, I think. Villa was our Fulham was after Villa, and then Luton at home, then West Ham, Forest, then right. Newcastle. Says Hyung Min. And this is Hyung Min, I think, at full time whistle yesterday. Yeah, at least he, he came over to the fans, which is, you know, you know Sonny, he's always going to appreciate the fans. He's left to the fans anyway. Yeah, well, you know, the fans are in the gods, you know, hard to see them um, a lot of the time. So fair play to Sonny. But a tough day yesterday. But, you know, a lot of, a lot of uh, teams in that situation a lot of them just go straight down the tunnel don't they at least Sonny just shows it you see Madison there holding his hands up like that what an effort for the fans though 12 30 kick off yeah. up at Newcastle difficult and to see that says big Dan burn on Bentancourt in mm. his own box and VAR nah nothing in it that yeah we didn't mention that in the review that I don't know why that wasn't given a penalty yeah, I mean, it should have been given a penalty, but... It was weird. It was 2-0. Two, two it was just for half time, wasn't it? Ben Tancourt gets Eric Byrne. Yeah. Byrne kicks him. Yeah. And you know what's the most frustrating thing? Madison did the same thing in the second half. And they gave him a yellow card <laughs> and a free kick. So I, I, I don't understand. That should have been a penalty. And there you was, know, you never know. Maybe it's 2-1. There was a, a couple one. of moments I questioned the ref yesterday being like, why is that not a booking? And then you book um, another player for something even less. I don't mm. understand it. There was a couple of weird moments from the referee yesterday but I don't think you can uh, say the result would have gone any other way well look you never know we, we get a goal we get a goal back in at 2-0 and maybe we're back in the game but, um, but but it was very very odd no obviously you can't blame that because we got absolutely battered on the day but it was you know at that moment I think it was just after we scored the second goal I think Vicario put that long ball forward and Ben Tenkel was through he heads it I think did he head it past the keeper or there was a mistake he gets to the ball first and Byrne takes him out and the VAR didn't even look at penalties. it. VAR, VAR, one penalty all season. I thought maybe it was outside the box. Maybe that's why VAR didn't give it. But then people are saying it was inside the box. So I don't understand why that wasn't given. Moonchild says, um, putting that shit on the Tottenham captain, may God strike you down. And this is in re reply to the Bleach report saying, after getting thrashed by Newcastle, Tottenham's Champions League hopes will get boost boosted by Arsenal beating top four rivals Villa on Sunday and Arsenal beating Bayern in the Champions League to help England's coefficient in the fifth spot. Awkward. And um, look, I've said it many a time. I prefer Arsenal to drop than uh, Spurs to get Champions League for next season. So come on Villa today. That's what yeah, I'm saying. Massively. And come on Bayern as well. Don't care. It's going to be, as I said, it's going to take a lot more than a coefficient place for me to want Arsenal to win in the Champions League, that's for sure. <laughs> I don't think it will take anything. Like, what could it possibly take for you to want Arsenal to win in the Champions There's nothing in the world that can, that can say, like, that will make you sway that decision. <laughs> yeah, nothing. True. Um, Ham Tottenham is replying to Spurs officials' a tweet. Um, saying Isaac scores to, um, yeah. Yeah, we all felt like that, I think, yesterday. I think we all needed a, um, a moment to ourselves. And next up, Kev saying, um, this is a quote from Ange, saying, that was a tough day, um, Ange, but apart from the 4-0 loss, I thought the boys played some really good stuff. Is that no, what he no. actually said? No, he's taking the piss out of the interviewer. Oh, you no, know, that's what I'm saying. Is that what the interviewer said? Or he's no, just he's, the take, piss he's taking because he always does that after like a defeat. Oh, even though it's bad, the feels are good stuff. And then Ange gets really pissed off at him. Um, so I think he's just making I love Marzi, yeah. I love him. But he's not the greatest interviewer. Well, what I would say is Ange doesn't seem to like him. I think that's clear. But I've seen, like, even stuff, like, from James Madison seems to get the hump about stuff he asks as well. And it's just like, maybe mm. it's best just to keep Ben Haynes on these kind of things. Maybe. Uh, I'm not going to go too far into it. But he, he definitely has, like, after a defeat, he, like, uh, maybe, maybe it's because he's hired by the clubs. They're always trying to tell him, look, put a positive spin on it. Like, try and get uh, something positive because after a bad defeat, they need something to hang on to. And uh, he, he always tries to, like, say, like, oh, you know, it was a bad defeat. But we showed fight, didn't we, Ange? Yeah. And I'm like, just go away. Like, oh, like, we will shit today. Well, he wants to say it, you can see it, but he like, he can't say it. Yeah. <laughs> Athletic says 95 seconds. Mickey Van der Ven will not want to relive, and that was obviously the two goals where he slipped for. Um, yes, other players did uh, play him into trouble and and left him with a thankless task to really recover that ball. But he does slip at the vital moments. Yeah, and that's unfortunate. It's un very unlike Van der Ven. Um, someone said he was wearing sandals on the day. I, I wonder if he changed his boots at half time after those slips. But there were many players slipping. Like a doggy was slipping as mm. well. Like there was something going on there. Maybe the Newcastle players had uh, extra long studs in their boots. They or watered something. the grass, the bastards. Yeah. 
Joe Tomlinson says, uh, well, he doesn't say anything. He just has a picture of Van de Ven ah, uh, with his does. face planted on the... On the everyone ground. wants a bit of a... Because he's had such a good season, so as soon as he has one bad game, everyone wants to pile in, don't they? And last but not least, Billy T says, favourite thing about watching Spurs is when we have the ball and it goes to a replay, and when the replay finishes, the other side are through on goal. <laughs> that mystery of not knowing quite how we fucked it is uh, what keeps me alive. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what happened with that opening goal. They were showing the replay of the first goal, and literally they cut back, it's like Gordon's about to shoot, and scores. what the hell just happened? Like, oh, for God's sake. How many times that happened as a Spurs fan? So many. It's happened so many times, so many. honestly. Probably more than any other team Honor, in the history we must, of the We must League. have a record for most uh, goals scored while the replay of the first goal was bloody yeah. uh, being shown I bet you yeah well I guess that is it from us today I'm just checking if there's any more no there's not uh, but a quick update is that Liverpool have 20 minutes to go and they're 1-0 down to Crystal Palace yeah, at Anfield they missed so many chances I can't quite believe they're not level yet but we'll see in the last 20 minutes we need them because otherwise Arsenal getting a big advantage in the title race yeah um, obviously, Man City played yesterday, right? They did. Man City yeah. 5 1 against 5-1. Luton, that was it. Come um, on, but here come Liverpool. Let's get an equaliser. Oh, I don't know. I so don't know Liverpool if Palace have w- looked so unconvincing in recent weeks. Well, they've been great. To, I've, I mean, from what I've seen, I think in the first half, it seemed as though Palace had a lot of chances. But I've been watching it a bit here, and it looks like they've had a lot of chances, Liverpool, and Henderson's had a mad game in the second half um, and Fulham are tuning up away at West Ham oh, wow. Andres Pereira scoring two goals another goal for Pereira fair play yeah. but yeah I think we'll leave it there guys thank you everyone for tuning in today we'll be back tomorrow for some more Spurs content for you guys um, and that was your therapy and post-mortem from yesterday's 4-0 defeat at St James's Park like subscribe and comment and as always come, come on you Spurs, Spurs.